relationship with the outside world such that we view the outside world as having more possibility, that is going to put us into forward momentum. Mm. There's, there, are good, there are a lot of studies to support that. So law of attraction essentially just being uh, what you think you become, what you think you create, what you, what you think about consistently, you'll start to attract in your life. It's kind of the baseline principle. There's more to it, but I'm simplifying it. Okay. So when we think about something consistently in our minds, is there science around this that uh, validates or doesn't validate that we start to, in the physical world, attract our thoughts, okay. whether it be a negative thought about mm. what I don't want or a thought around what I do want. It's almost like saying, okay, when you think about a pink elephant, you, you see it everywhere. Right. Is this, is there science to this? So, um, well, I can't give a uh, intelligent answer about the, the law of attraction specifically, but what I can perhaps do is shed some light on what we think we know, what neuroscientists think we know mm -hmm. about um, how thoughts and thinking actually work and how those relate to behaviors. And then I'll give a little anecdote that um, Sweet. that uh, I think people might appreciate because it's something that I keep in mind a lot in thinking about goal setting and mm. focus and okay. this kind of thing. So thoughts are, let me back up one second. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I know I've covered this before, so I'm going to cover it very quickly because we talked about this last time. But in case someone um, didn't hear that discussion or, or forgets, senses are these cells within our body, our eye, our skin, our nose, our, our mouth, it's our, that are taking physical entities in the universe, They're like wavelengths of light, physical touch, and translating that into nerve signals, into electrical signals in the body. That's how the nervous Senses system. meaning taste, yeah. feel, yep. sight, hearing, hearing yeah. the five exactly. senses. Gotcha. The five senses. And people always say, well, what about intuition? That's different. That's not a sense. That's a, that's a, actually a sense of your internal world. It's called interoception as huh. opposed to exteroception, huh. sense of the outside world. So the five senses. And we are very, whether or not people like it or not, we are heavily constrained by those senses. For instance, a mantis shrimp, of all things, can see like 64 different shades of color that we can only see one shade of, for instance, because they have receptors that can pick out those things. Um, some animals can see ultraviolet emissions, others can see infrared, a pit mm. viper can see your heat emissions. It, you know, humans wow. sometimes think they can see heat emissions, but they can't see heat emissions unless they put infrared goggles on, then they can't. So the senses constrain our experience of the world. And I don't doubt that there are some people that have a little quarter of a percent more UV detection, or mm -hmm. there's even some evidence for weak magneto reception in humans from good labs. A little really? bit of, yeah, and turtles have very strong magneto reception. What does that mean, magneto reception? They can sense magnetic fields. So they sense them as, you know, like that's a magnetically. Humans have, there's some evidence written up in Science Magazine if people wanna look, look it up, which is quality journal for weak magnetic sensing in humans, some humans, not strong. but okay. it's not strong, okay? And it's not in most, strong in most people by any stretch. Whereas turtles can navigate long distances based on magnetic fields in the, in That's the ocean. That's cool. It's very cool. That's cool. It's very cool. Um, so our experience of the world, all humans experience of the world is kind of tunneled by these, what we can see and what we can't see. There's a lot happening that we can't see. It's just the reality. That's why we, that's why people need night vision goggles and supposed to just looking at things in the night without them. <laughs> so that's key. So there's sensation and then there's perception, which is simply to say, which of those things are we paying attention to? So I can see that this water bottle is, you know, a mixture of blue and glass and, you know, cause I decided to look at it, but I was mm -hmm. sensing it out of the corner of my eye the whole time, but I was focused on right. something. I okay. can sense the right. air touching my skin right. cause I'm deciding to focus on that. That's feeling. right. Yeah. That's right. So that's perception. And you want to just make sure that we close the hatch on interoception, perception of what's going on. Like I don't think about my heart rate too much, but if I stop and think about it, I'm thinking about my heart rate and then I'm just sensing my heart rate. It's, but it's mm -hmm. still just pressure. It's, you know, it's a physical phenomenon. Okay, um, then there's thinking, which we'll get to. Mm -hmm. Then there's emotions slash feelings, and those are complicated, but they are tractable, as we say. We can, we can figure it out. And then there's behaviors, like you're writing right now. It's a measurable thing, it's a real thing. 
Okay, so what about thoughts? What in the world is thinking? Well, in many ways, thinking is a lot like perception. Perception, again, being which sensations I'm focusing on, except that thinking incorporates sensations from the past, sensations from the present, and can include sensations from the future that we haven't even had yet. Interesting. So this, I think, speaks to your question about law of attraction, which is, you know, never really been formalized in, for the scientific community. So I'm trying to mm -hmm. take, take it and cram it through a neuroscience filter sure. here, see what comes out the other side. But the, the interesting thing about thinking is it's very hard to control our spontaneous thoughts. So for instance, I can't prevent myself from thinking something. However, I can deliberately introduce a thought. People forget this, that one of our enormous powers is, as human beings is, is another form of top-down control, which is to say, I'm gonna write out my name, I am Andrew, or I can think, I am Andrew. Now, it takes a little bit of work, you kind of notice, to, to think something specific, like you would write it out in your head, just as you would write it out on paper. It feels like a little bit of work, because it is work. You're taking that spontaneous, thought process and you're inserting a thought on top of it. And we know that you can't hold too many thoughts in mind at once. So the, what I will say is that it's hard to suppress thoughts, but it's actually quite easy to introduce thoughts. And it sounds to me like this, this law is basically a process of introducing thoughts. And when you start introducing thoughts and you start thinking of thoughts, as a form of perception. The they, way you view the world. They sh they're gonna shape the way you, they're gonna shape what you see. Wow. They're very gonna he heavily constrain what you see. Now this has a dark side and a light side. <laughs> and I, I you know, Tell me. the dark side is, is that beliefs are essentially thoughts that are rec recurring thoughts or things that are kind of like books on a shelf that you can reach to anytime. If I say, hey, what about that book out there, you know, um, Jay Shetty's book, you can go grab it because it's on the shelf right there mm -hmm. and you can show it to me, right? It's there all the time, you know where it is and it's very accessible. Whereas if so you- So belief's a reoccurring thought. Right. So you said? Yeah. yeah. Whereas if you, where, whereas if you have, um, have never thought about something in particular, like um, if I, you know, we start having a discussion about something that you're not very familiar with or you tell me about something I'm not very familiar with, then it's gonna take some work, it mm -hmm. feels like work. So To understand it, to right. perceive it, to experience it, that's to right. take it in, to, to question your previous beliefs about something, that's all right. that, right? And there's some interesting data that were published in the journal Neuron this last year, not from my group, that show that beliefs actually have their own rewarding quality that there's actually dopamine release associated with beliefs. Having an ab a belief. Yes. So when you believe something, you're, there are chemical reward systems in your mind that are associated with just repeating that belief. Now, again, this has a dark side and a light side. The dark side is it means that people can be very fixed in their beliefs and they're actually being chemically rewarded for having the same belief. The world is flat. I believe the world is flat and just saying it over and over right. again. Or in-group, out-group type thinking of any kind. Or what I do you mean in-group, out-group? Well, when people think, oh, I believe that that group of people over there is this way uh, and or good or bad, right? It's, there's a self-reward mechanism mm, that's getting engaged I'm, there. I'm greater than this group. Could be greater than or less, less than. So is, you know, that beliefs are attached to a set of rewards. Interesting. So what the, now, the dopamine system is exceedingly powerful because dopamine is, is a kind of a dumb molecule. It has no brain of its own. It's just a, it's just a molecule, right? It's just a yeah. chemical. But when dopamine is released in our brain, we, first of all, it tends to orient us towards goals in the outside environment. It's the, it's the molecule, not just of reward, but of motivation. And when we release dopamine, we tend to see the world in terms of external goals. And so you can imagine now if there's a process built up inside us where our thoughts are causing dopamine release and dopamine is shaping what we see as rewards, what we perceive as rewards, that can be wonderful or terrible wow. depending on how that's harnessed. So let me understand this. When we have dopamine uh, triggered in our body, it's attached to, because it's attached to some type of belief, we're gonna to continue to say, this feels good. That's right. So let me keep thinking this way. And viewing the world this in way. In this way, because it's right. gonna keep making me feel good. That's right. Physically. That's right. Wow. Even right. if it's a fact 
or not fact, right. scientifically true or, or not true. Or harmful to other people or harmful Ooh. to yourself. If it makes you feel good, you might stick to that belief. That's right. So a good example with dopamine is it, with anytime thinking about science and neuroscience in particular, thinking at the extremes can be kind of useful. Mm -hmm. So people who are very depressed, who see no possibility in the world. Mm -hmm. who, if you talk to a depressed person, every response they give is going to be, but it's not gonna work out. It doesn't they work are for me. absolutely yeah. certain that things are gonna turn out bad. And there's a benefit for having that belief, and right? And they're, they're entrenched in it. They may actually be rewarding that somewhat, although typically depressed states have very low dopamine. Oh. At the opposite extreme is mania. When people are in a manic phase, <laughs> dopamine is very high, we know this, and they see possibility everywhere, and there's certain things are gonna work out. They, they will spend money they don't have, they'll create relationships they don't have time and energy for, they will overdo everything. And so somewhere in the middle is this healthy range where, mm. we're con where we realize that how we view the world is shaping the release of these chemicals. And I do believe this happens when we have positive thoughts, we, we get a lift. If we, if we can get a lift from our positive thoughts, and then dopamine itself puts us in relationship with the outside world such that we view the outside world as having more possibility, that is going to put us into forward momentum. Mm. There's, there, are good, there are a lot of studies to support that. When dopamine is low, we tend to see very little possibility in the world. 